getting a brand new Android phone could be very exciting and it also could be a little daunting. I totally understand a lot of people. I, I, I know so many people out there who are like, man, I want to get a new phone, but that means I'm going to lose all my text messages. I'm going to lose all my contact numbers. I'm going to, all my apps are going to be deleted. Yeah, we're going to talk about some of that because, you know, it's actually much easier than you think. It takes a little bit of time, but setting up a new Android phone is not that scary, guys. So we're going to walk you through how to set up a brand new Android phone. I'm Alex Simotech. Let's do it. So the phone we're using today is the Google Pixel 3 XL. And the reason I chose this, even though it's already a generation behind, is because it was lying around in my drawer and it's a stock Android experience. Stock Android is what Google created Android to be. It's their image of Android. So it's the purest form of you know, this type of setup. And just so you know, if you have a Samsung, an LG, or a Xiaomi, or whatever other device out there, an OEM, you might have a different experience with your setup menu. However, it is close enough because the way I explain it to uh, a lot of people who aren't aware of this is that Samsung, LG, other OEMs, they get whatever you see right now from Google, but they also put like how I explain it is like a fresh coat of paint on top of it. They add little things here and there, change the color a little bit, add like their own sign in for this and that. And it's just a skin on top of this particular Android. So fundamentally, it's the same stuff. It might be somewhat different in appearance aesthetically, but don't worry about it. I'll also talk you through certain things that you might see in here. All right, so the first thing you're gonna see, obviously, is this welcome screen. Every single phone nowadays has this high there and they have multiple languages that you can select from. So as you can see right here, it says English. You have your selection of languages. Usually it should be default English, but if you buy an unlocked phone from a Chinese manufacturer like Xiaomi, even the global versions should be in English, but sometimes they're in Chinese. Don't panic if you see that. All you have to do is just change language. They also now have this whole accessibility thing where you know a lot of older audiences might have bad eyes, so you can actually zoom in, magnify it, or increase the font size right off the back without doing anything. So you get this here. Uh, it might be a little different depending on your 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 phone, your carrier, etc. But essentially, it's the same. Get your language set up, press start, and then next thing they want you to do. Most setups want you to do is to put your SIM card in. I may never actually do that. So just a little background. I basically change phones at least once a month. So I set up a brand new phone at least once or twice a month. So I go through this a lot. I normally don't put my SIM card in until after I get the phone set up. And the reason I do that is it does take a little bit of time. Usually my setup process takes about like 40 minutes to have this whole setup and also all the apps downloaded and signed in. I'll also show you guys how to do that stuff so you don't have to stress about it too much. So the reason I don't put the SIM card in immediately right away is because I want to still receive my phone calls, emails, and texts because, you know, it's a work day. So I don't put that in until after. And there's a little trick to that. I'll talk about it in a second, but let's just skip this for now because I normally don't do this and I think it's a better way to go about this. So the next step you normally have to go through is to sign into your Wi-Fi connection. So you have a list of your Wi-Fi stuff. Just click on the one that you know that you belong to and then we'll go from there. So after signing into your Wi-Fi, right now the Pixel wants us to maybe start downloading our previous apps and data. Let's actually press next right now and see what it wants. It says you can use your old phone by connecting your USB-C cable. Um, so you can connect your cable from this phone to your other phone and try your data transfer. I'm not gonna do that actually. So instead of using the cable to do it, I normally use a backup from the cloud, your Google Drive account. So if you have not backed up your phone, this is how you do it. So you go into your settings menu. Let's go into settings. And then you scroll down to wherever your backups option here. So in this particular phone, it's under systems and then backup. So you're going to click on backup and it says backup to Google Drive. So I'm going to toggle it and it's going to say turn off and delete the backup. Turn it on if you haven't turned it on. It's already on for me. So it backs up your account. It's going to tell you when it last backed up, your Google Photos, etc. So on your previous phone, 
uh, before transferring the information over to your new phone, you should probably have that set up. Let it back up once before you do this process here to continue on. So on the screen here, you can see that there's different options for you to back up your previous phone onto here. There's even an iPhone process where you can actually go and follow this on Safari and do this process. I've done this before. It also does work. Uh, what I normally do from backing up with an Android phone is I go on the cloud here. You click on that wait for it to load it's checking on your info what it's going to ask you to do is sign into your google account so once again um, if you have a samsung or an lg or xiaomi where they do have different cloud services you can also sign into those accounts uh, whenever they press you to sign into it so i'm going to sign into mine right here it is signing in right now and it's requesting that i have a verification number on it if your sim card is already in here if you didn't follow my instructions and you put the sim card in already it will automatically do one of those auto fills so if you already have that great if not pull out your previous phone that the one that you have your sim card in and it's going to have the text message type in the code right there okay so as you see there i am signed into my google account and now you can just wait for the phone to work for you. It's going to do all that good stuff. It's going to transfer all your previous settings. It's going to transfer all your previous apps. It's going to transfer basically all of that stuff into this phone right now, exactly where you left off previously on your other phone. This does take a little bit of time. Let it go and do its thing. We'll pick it up after it is done. Okay, so as you can see, we have a new populated screen. It says choose a backup to restore. And I have multiple things here, multiple devices here. These are the actual names of those devices. I have a SMF700U1 backup. That says six hours ago at 1.07 p.m. It is 4.50 right now. And then I also have this RMX and this Atlas one. I'm actually not too sure what those are. But this one particularly is the Samsung Galaxy Fold that I am using right here. So that is my last backup six hours ago. Whatever I had back up there, it's gonna be backing up all the apps, all the settings I had six hours ago, it's gonna be there. So I'm gonna click on that one right now and it's gonna confirm the screen lock. And you need to type in the password or your code from your previous phone, um, whatever, whichever one you picked. So if you have a consistent, um, password that you use for all your phones then type that one in there so here is my four digit code that i just typed in here and it should confirm that and we should be able to move on to the next part okay so now that it is all populated here what that means is all the information that you had on your previous phone has now been transferred onto this phone now that doesn't mean that all of that needs to be downloaded on this phone because this menu here is giving you an option to choose what you want to select onto this new phone. So for example, we have apps, contacts, SMS messages, device settings, call history, all these things that you can choose from. Right now, everything is automatically selected. You can actually go deeper into it, press on apps. For example, it says I have 82 apps that I had on my previous phone. I don't have to download all of those apps. For example, Samsung has some proprietary apps that they throw onto your phone by default. You don't have to use it on a Pixel phone, so you can unclick one of them. So for example, Samsung forced Microsoft OneDrive onto my phone on a Samsung phone. It's like this agreement they have with Microsoft. I don't use it. Now I can have an option to remove it. So I can take away Outlook and take away Microsoft OneDrive on this phone install. So I'm down to 80 apps on here to download. And you can check on your contacts. You can delete it. If you don't want any of your contacts in there from your previous phone, you can get rid of it all. And uh, same thing with the device settings. If you want to start fresh with its stock settings, you can do that as well. But I'm going to keep all of that because I'm trying to make my life easier and not have to do all the settings myself. So everything I'm used to in my previous phone is going to get transferred here. Settings, phone calls, all the call logs, all your SMS, it's all going to be here. So let's actually click restore. This will take a bit of time. So once again, be patient. Let this thing go at it. I guess it doesn't take too much time. It's <laughs> just going straight into it. Uh, so I'm going to set my time. I don't know why it wants me to set my time. It should know my time. Pacific Standard, it's a Friday right now. That is the right time. Let's go next. So before we got into setting up the video, I was talking about how you need to have the setting on on your previous phone. So this 
guarantees that you're going to have everything backed up by enabling this button. So you see back up to Google Drive says easily restore your data or switch phones at any time. Have this toggled on or off. Automatically, it's toggled on. But for some reason, some people might toggle it off because they don't want Google having their information, et cetera. So I understand why you may have that toggled off. That's why I did that video. That's why I did that little segment showing you guys how to toggle it on um, before you switch back to another phone. Uh, but right now, it's on location, all of this stuff. I normally keep it on. I, I let, you know, honestly, they're going to get your information anyway. Might as well just let them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that that's the thing but you know feel free to read through it untoggle things if you don't if you really are cautious and worried about that stuff I'm just going to leave it on press accept here uh, additional legal terms take your time reading through it if you want to I usually just you have to press accept you know so if you buy this phone you got to press accept but you know you don't have to if you don't want to once again then we are going to set up our fingerprint scanner and a lot of phones also have face ID. So we're going to go through this right now. You're going to have to set up a pin or a password. A lot of phones give you uh, the options. You can do that. You can press right here, select options. You can do a pin, a pattern or a password. I normally do a pin. So I'm going to do a pin here. I'm going to type in my normal pin. It's going to ask you to repeat it as well. So you type it in twice and there you go. My pin has been inputted and now we're going to set up the fingerprint scanner. Most phones out there have either fingerprint scanner or nowadays they eliminate the fingerprint scanner for the face ID. But for this process, we'll just go through it anyway. We're going to press next, locate the fingerprint scanner. So this particular fingerprint scanner is on the back of the phone. So I'm just going to put my finger on the back. It's going to prompt you to follow the instructions. Usually you, you just keep tapping it lift your finger a little bit um, from where the scanner is, rub your finger around a little bit. There we go. We have the fingerprint scanner all ready to go. Then if you have a face ID process, it'll, it'll, it'll prompt you to do that as well. We're going to move on anyway, though. So now it says continue setup. Keep going to get your phone fully set up or leave now and get a reminder to finish. So you can actually skip already to go deep into it and you can continue the rest of the settings yourself in the settings. We'll just go through it anyway, just so you have an idea. Uh, Google Assistant. So every single Android phone has the Google Assistant nowadays. Uh, and this is how you set it up. So you press, I agree. Uh, if you already have a previous one, they probably have your voice already recorded on here. If you don't, this is the time to set it up. So for example, I already have it set up because of that whole backup thing. They already had a copy of my voice, unfortunately. Um, and so it already recognized my voice, had all the settings went th gone through. If not, this is where you would have had to reset it. And you're going to have to say, OK, Google three times. Sorry if I triggered your phone, by the way. You have to say that uh, phrase three times in a different tone, pitch, whatever you want to do, and it'll recognize and save that in your voice. So Google assistant knows to wake up. So we have that done there. Now this particular phone also has this setting where you can squeeze like HTC did this as well, but you can squeeze to do it. Uh, I don't think a lot of phones out actually basically no phones out there have this, so you can skip through it. But at this point in the process, if you have a phone that has a special feature, like um, Samsung has like this little edge sense thing, they'll probably walk you through this. Or if you have like a new AI thing on your phone, they'll probably walk you through these features right here. So this is what's going on. At least this Pixel one, it just wants you to adjust how much pressure you feel from squeezing. This is kind of cool though. You know, honestly, when I had the HTC uh, U11, that was one of my favorite things to do. Uh, it's kind of stupid, but I kind of like it. Okay, now Google Pay. So you can also set up your Google Pay. Samsung has the Samsung Pay process. You just log into your account once again. And then if you already have your information, it'll transfer it over. Like it recognizes my Amazon Prime Visa card because that's one of my main credit cards that I use on my Google Pay. So it already sees it. Uh, I don't have to do anything about it. If you have your Samsung account for Samsung Pay, once again, if you log in, it should have your information. Sometimes it might have you re-log uh, in your um, credit card information. So do that in this process if it requires you to do it. Now we move on to other things. Most phones nowadays have this always on display. We're going to turn it on here. 
And that's about it. Samsung also has that, by the way. And LG, I think, also does that as well. So a lot of phones out there have this whole always on display. You can adjust the settings later on, but I normally enable it because it does help a lot doing uh, notifications at a glance. And then this final screen, a lot of you guys are probably going to just skip through it because you don't need to do it. But this is where you can add an additional email. You can review additional apps that you may want to install that they might recommend for you. You can control your information on your lock screen, all privacy stuff. Everything you see here, you can do on your own in these settings when you uh, start the phone. So I normally do no thanks because I'm going to go through it anyway. I do add my secondary email on there and things like that onto my Gmail, but I do that later. Um, tips and tricks. Also, you can do these buy-ins for email ads and stuff like that. I keep that off. I, I already get enough spam from them anyway. Uh, so let's just do it. Let's just, we're done. All right, so this phone is all completed. As you can see here, my log, I'm going to open it with my fingerprint. Uh, see, Nova Launcher is already downloaded. I have Nova Launcher on my Samsung phones. We're just going to go with the Pixel Launcher, by the way, right now. But as you can see on the home app, it's like, hey, what do you want to use? Because they already have all the options that I had on my previous phone already downloaded here. So right there, there you go. There is the phone all set up and ready for you to go. It's not that scary, right? All, all the stuff is, is going on. And right now, it is actually downloading the rest of our apps right here. So as you can see, it says completing setup. This does take a little bit about a little bit of time. So that's why I mentioned before, keep your SIM card in your previous phone right now. Let it finish its setup. It says installed five out of the 83 applications I had. So it's going to take a while. It's going to take a little bit of time to do this, but you can still use this phone right now to continue the rest of your setup if you want to um, adjust the settings. Uh, but yeah, right now the phone is setting up all the apps are uh, going on in the background and it usually takes once again like 30 minutes for this to finish up after that initial 10 minute settings setup. Uh, in this meantime, what I normally do is I let it go in the background, let it finish its stuff. But if you click on like text messages, you can see all my text messages are here and uh, it's ready to go. So pretty cool stuff. Same thing with my call logs. All my call logs should be here and there you go. All my call logs are there. It's one of those things where it's so easy to do now. You kind of, you know, you kind of shouldn't be scared of it anymore. There's a lot of misconceptions, once again, about setting up a new Android phone. It's really daunting. I, I totally understand. But as you saw there, with that backup, it's pretty easy to do. Now, there you have it. The phone is set up and ready to go with really minimal effort. If you have any questions or any comments you want to leave below, somebody might see it and answer it. Or if I see it, I'll answer it to the best of my ability. My name is Alex from Signal Tech. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys in new ones very soon. And that's it. Be sure to subscribe here. Hit the bell button so you don't miss any of our videos. And check out our other videos right here. Until next time, 